Stop the Bleed is a nationwide campaign that started after the Sandy Hook school shooting on December 14, 2012. Um, 20 kids, six adults, one gunman all died in that incident, and it was Dr. Linworth Jacobs, who was the trauma surgeon on call that day, who reviewed all the autopsies and determined, you know, if our bystanders had the proper training and techniques on how to control life-threatening bleeding, then we could save a lot of lives. When we heard about the Stop the Bleed program, we knew right away this was the place to bring it to at the Lincoln Airport. We're open uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And all of my police officers are very experienced. They've had a tremendous amount of first aid training. They've come across many things in their career. But they walked out of this hour-long training going, wow, I feel so much more prepared to be able to, to handle a critical, life-threatening bleeding situation. With the geographic location of the Norris School District being somewhat in remote southern Lancaster County, we are at a pretty good distance from medical transport services. So the need for us to be equipped with training and with that basic stop the bleed knowledge is really important. In uh, February, uh, Brittany did her first class. She did it downtown at our Lincoln building, and that was approximately 75 employees. And then uh, word got around that these employees had the training in a divisional meeting, so then we put it to a corporate meeting and did uh, all of our line workers here and the rest of our office people here. So overall, I'm gonna say close to 500 employees total got the training. What's great about this campaign is you don't need any medical experience at all to be able to save a life. What a lot of people don't realize is if you get a paper cut, you're applying pressure to that wound. So we teach it's the same concept with just a bigger wound. You're just applying pressure and you can learn about a tourniquet and use that as well. It empowers our community to really step up and, and help one another and that's what our community is really liking about this. I think one of the most compelling facets of the initial training that we had at Norris was understanding that there's still a really critical window of time after an accident occurs where bleeding is happening with a victim that if someone on site can take action they can help immediately and I think that that piece of it was so empowering and so enlightening because I don't think, I know I wasn't, I don't think most of our team members were aware of, of how important that is. Sometimes we work along roads and we have uh, the road crew come in from the city of Lincoln that set up the traffic cones. Uh, while they were, while this one gentleman, which everybody knows because he comes up and sets up a lot of our jobs, he was setting it up and a, uh, a car ran into him and his leg was pinned and it, losing a lot of blood. Luckily a passenger driving by saw that and used a tourniquet to help save his life. That impacted a lot of our line workers because they knew that it was firsthand. They were right, you know, they came up on the scene and it just shows you having something like that readily available would just make it, it more comfortable for the guys when they're in a, a tragic situation like that. We have trained more than 3,000 people across the state of Nebraska on how to stop the bleed, and of that, every single person who has taken the class here in Lincoln has walked away with a free tourniquet in hand, thanks to a $95,000 grant from the Community Health Endowment given to the Bryan Foundation. One of the really critical aspects of this is that this training is available to anybody, and you walk away with not only the knowledge to stop the bleeding, but the equipment necessary. Everybody walks away with the tourniquet. Our police officers out here are now carrying tourniquets on their person. We are so much more prepared to respond in an emergency than we were just several months ago.